Udigurami, no matter what you call it, bent arm lock, double wrist lock, the Kimura, anything you call it, it's a nasty arm lock and it really is effective. And in today's show, we're going to take a serious look at Udigurami, so stay tuned. Hi everybody, I'm Steve Scott and welcome to another episode of Freestyle Judo. We have a lot going on the show today. Uh, principally, we're going to look at Udigarami, the arm entanglement, the bent arm lock, the Kimura, whatever you want to call it, it is a really effective arm lock. And I'm going to give my take on how to teach it, how to, how to approach it logically so that it makes sense and uh, you can use it for all your students or you can use it for your own training. So we're gonna take a look at Udi Garami here later in the show. Before we get to that, we are going to look at uh, some methods for grip training. And you know, the first thing we do when we, uh, whether it's a, a match, practice, whatever it may be, you reach out and touch someone and that, that someone you touch is your opponent. And the first thing you use to touch them with is your hands. So how strong your hands are and your forearms and arms are very important for what we do. So I'm going to show some uh, maybe unusual exercises you can do off the mat or even before you get on the mat and practice uh, to use to strengthen your grip. Okay, so that's coming a little bit later in, in the show. I also have a really good question on tap someone sent me, uh, which we're really going to explore at the very end of the in the show. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, but first, uh, I want to tell you really quickly here about uh, my books that are coming out. Um, we have the, uh, the Judo Advantage is my latest book. Uh, it is published by YMAA Publishing. We expect it to be on the market in uh, early March, mid-March 2019. Um, you can uh, get, we can pre-order or you can uh, just wait till then, but you can go to Amazon or the YMAA website and we have that up here. So you can keep checking Amazon. If it's not there yet, keep checking. Uh, it eventually will get there. And same with the, the YMAA website. So that's the Judo Advantage. Uh, here's a little clip of it. Here's a little look at it right now, the title, the cover anyway. So here we go there. Okay, so that was the uh, cover. That's what it looks like. So look for that book. Uh, and secondly, uh, YMAA Publishing is doing a reprint of my very popular book, Jujigatami Encyclopedia. And that will be available. Uh, it's, it's available now for pre-order on Amazon. If you want to go to Amazon and type in Jujigatami Encyclopedia YMAA Publishing, the reprint is available there. Um, and it is, uh, it's the same book. We just have a few things changed on it, just the, the front and back cover, just a bit of change there. Uh, but it that book was a very popular one. And uh, not to brag, and I'm really not bragging, I think it really fit um, a need for a lot of people to, to g give some clarity and um, pretty exhaustive look at Jujigatami. So anyway, Jujigatami Encyclopedia will be out in uh, mid-May 2019. So look for that. And like I said, at Amazon and also at the YMAA uh, uh, website. And as always, we have our, my books available on our online store at uh, welcomematstore.com. So go to there. Uh, a lot of my books are available there. Many of the books that are out of print now are on, uh, available there as well. So if you, if you want to go there, please do uh, support our program by going to our, our uh, online store. It's very much appreciated. Well, let's take a look first at, uh, let me get my notes here. Uh, we're gonna take a look at grip strength. Now, you know, this is an area of training that um, we need a lot in, the, in the, any type of grappling sport, especially those where we use jackets, where we grab a, a, a judo gi, sambo, kurtka, whatever it may be. Um, it's very important to have good grip strength and good forearm and arm strength. And it's not vanity when I say, I think um, grappling athletes, judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu people, should uh, should work on their arms a lot. You know, it's not just to get big biceps to impress people. It is really to uh, it's really a functional tool, our arm strength. And what we're going to look on today, look at today here in the show, are um, uh, three things, three exercises that you can do. You can use with a shot, a dumbbell, 
and also a, uh, a power twister. So we're going to look at these videos, and I have them lined up here. Uh, first, let's look at um, a shot catch. And a shot catch, I'll explain it. I'll prep you here a little bit. A shot catch, uh, it, you know, it's a, I use a 12-pound shot, just like you'd see in track and field. I'll explain that in the video. But I've used them for years, and some of my athletes have used them as well. I've seen other people use them too. So it's a great implement for the gym, and you don't see it in many gyms, but uh, it, it really does help your grip strength. And this first video is going to show you a specific exercise I've done for many years, and other people may have done it as well. But this look at, at shot catches in this very first clip here. This very first one is what I call shot catches, okay? and. What I'm using here, I've chalked up a 12-pound shot like you find in track and field, okay? And they come in different sizes. The 12-pounder suits my hand size best, so I use it. Um, and as you, I, I, like I said, I chalked it up so I can have a good grip on it. I, I like to use that. Basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the shot palm down, as you can see me here in my hand here, and I'm just going to replace it and keep catching. I'm let go, grab with the other hand. Let go, grab with the other hand. Back and forth and keep catching it. This really works the extensors and all the flexors in your muscles. This really works your hands quite a bit. So it's a great exercise. I'll show you what I mean. So you grab here, palm down, and just catch, 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 catch. And as you can see, I'm going to do as many as I can, as long as I can. Now you can hold it up like this and catch it, pull it up and catch it. All kinds of variations just make it interesting for you. When you're using these shot catches, use them at the end of your training program. Like, a, you know, if you work your arms with that arm day or whatever, that's the last thing, one of the last things you want to do is work on your grip strength and forearm strength uh, after you do your biceps, triceps, all that other stuff. Because these really do wear out your grip. Okay? And I would say do a, a one set of as many catches as you can do. And when I was training and using this on a regular basis for myself and some of my athletes as well, uh, I would always recommend just doing a set of as many as you can do, how many of you can pull, you know, catch for as long as you can. You'd be amazed how many you can do that if you're really good at it, your grip's really good at it, how many catches you can make. And it's kind of fun to do. It's, it's a fun exercise, something different. You may not use every workout, but it's sure a good one to put into your rotation of exercises to use. So that's the shot catch. Okay, I, I don't think I have anything to add to that uh, little clip uh, other than to say um, it really is a lot of fun to do as a uh, cool down or as a finish exercise. I don't know if it's much of a cool down, but it's a good finish exercise after uh, what, whatever workout you want to do. I usually would do my um, shot catches for many years. I've done these for 25, 30 years. I just somehow came upon it. I don't know. Who, somebody might have taught it to me. I might have thought of it myself. I have no idea. But I started doing them many years ago. And... Uh, I, I would I would compete with myself at the end of a workout. Generally, my arm day, you know, upper body day that I was working that in the gym that day, I would do my shot catches and see how many I could do consecutively before I dropped it. And it was really fun. I competed with myself, kept a little record of that, and uh, just to brag a little bit, I did 660 consecutive catches. Now. If you don't believe it, that's okay, but it really did happen. So uh, if you can beat that, good for you. Get a strong grip. Um, okay, so let's take a look at our second uh, clip here. We'll entail uh, shot catches or, or shot use the, the shot as well, but also with a dumbbell and a very old bodybuilding exercise called Zotman curls. And I'm going to show you in this clip how to do Zotman, clear, clear, Zotman curls. Pardon me. It is a short clip, uh, but watch. We'll show the uh, using the dumbbell first, and we'll show using the shot curls then. So a little clip here on Zotman curls. So take a look. These are called Zotman curls. And Zotman curls, basically, I start with my, my palm, that I can see by the back of my hand, palm down, and I'm going to curl it up on the way in and rotate it back down, just like that. And that's a Zotman curl. So I'm using a 25 pounder here. And bottom, see, back of my hand, curl it up and rotate it back down. 
See, like this? And you can use it, you know, like in the center here, you can do like this, up and down like this. You know, if you want it closer. Or some guys like to do their curls, uh, their concentration curl movement with their elbow in the side of their thigh like this. Okay? But like that. See that? And curl up and back down. So that's a Zotman curl. Well, we're going to replicate that with a shot. By replicating it with a shot, we're going to be using more grip strength. And that's what we're really shooting for here. You, the Zotman curl will really help build the, the musculature and the strength in your forearms, but so will the shot. Okay, so again, take a 12 pound shot like I've got here. I got it chalked up so I can keep a good grip on it. And I hold it palm down and I just curl it up, down and up. It's hard to hold on to, it takes a while. But you've got to keep that grip and do for, you know, sets of 10, 20, whatever you want to do. Again, we're working small muscle groups here. So that's what I would do on the shot curls. All right, you saw that little short clip there. Um, I'll tell you what, it's uh, uh, those, those shot curls are pretty tough. Um, it, it, really, if you can do like a 25 pound Zotman curl, you know, as a concentration movement, like I showed in the video uh, with good form, you can handle about 12 pound uh, shot is about what you can handle. It's about half the weight you're actually doing in a Zotman curl with a dumbbell. So uh, uh, the, holding on to that claw grip really does help uh, your gripping in judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu, whatever you want to do. I used to do the Scottish Highland Games. I loved doing that for many years. Uh, in that sport, you had to have really strong grip uh, for like the fireman's carry. Uh, I even entered some telephone book tearing contests from time to time, which was not in the Scottish games, but it was just fun to do. So um, for any type of grip strength, it's really important. So those those shot curls are really, really good. They, they work well. Okay, so we're going to now, we're going to kind of change gears here, as it were, on implements we're going to use. And... Uh, again, being an old guy, you know, I can, I can relate to this. This is old, this old school technology coming your way in this third clip. It's called a power twister. Um, you, we, I used to see them in the bodybuilding magazines back in the 1970s and 80s and 60s. Um, and they were advertised. And I, of course, I had to buy one and I ended up buying several. Uh, and you can get them in different weights and different uh, strengths, you know, the resistance levels. Uh, but it, you'll see what I see, what, what I'm talking about here in this clip it's a great uh, tool, great implement for not just improving your grip strength. And believe it or not, you, although it's, it's, it's a forearm exercise primarily and, and arm exercise, but also you work a lot of inner pec and everything else too. So the, the power twister is really a good addition to anybody, no matter what sport they play, but certainly the sports we do, the, the activities we do in martial arts. So here, we take a look at how to use a power twister in your training. I'd like to show you uh, how to use another implement that you uh, won't find in most uh, weight rooms. It's kind of unusual. It's called a power twister. Uh, a lot of the old timers like me uh, bought them years ago and I've, I've had one in my gym just about all the years since. It's a great, great tool. I mean, you do it in different directions and I'll show you here. And they come in different strength levels too. Different, uh, I mean, from, from fairly easy on to extremely hard. So uh, you can match it to whatever you're working on, how your strength grows. What this will do is really help your arm strength and all the way in even your back but it really works into your pectorals and I'll show you some what I mean when I do it so I've got the lightest one here so I don't look like a, a, a little sissy when I'm doing it but I'm grabbing palms down in this particular case see this and I like to do them seated because that way I isolate just my upper body doing it when I stand if you stood you can maybe swing you don't want to do that just just kind of be and keep my arms out here at shoulder height or a little lower and just squeeze and the important thing here is to do it with, with good uh, technique. Don't cheat. Don't go, you know, do it right. Well, I looked silly doing that, didn't I? But do this, yeah. And you can take, again, to show you, you can do it. I can take a heavier one, about twice as heavy, and you pull it out here and squeeze. And you see it's harder to do. But you can see what's happening here. My pecs, my arms, my grip. Shoulders, delts, even my upper back is really getting into it. You can see some work up here into your traps. So it, it does work 
a good upper body exercise. Great for gripping, great for the kind of stuff we do where we grab somebody and pull them in, and this is the type of movement that really helps that, okay? So this is a uh, spring bar or a power twister, and you can see how you squeeze it down. That's the basic way. Another way that's quite good is to curl it, okay? And again, we're really now, we're really working on the muscles here and working the arm strength that is so essential in good gripping. You can't have good gripping without good arm strength, good hand strength, and that's what these things develop. So again, here we go, like this. And what I do for this way, I kind of lock my elbows into my side here. I don't flare them out, okay, because this way it makes me do it stri more strictly. I just curl up and in. And I'll tell you what, it's harder to do this way than this way. You can see the difference. Okay, it's always a struggle, palms up. But you should do it this way as well. So if you like this, see, like it, woo, see, like that. See the movement? And do it strict and hold it. Just curl, hold it, bring back. And it's going to bounce a little bit, eh, but that's what you want. It's a great exercise for your gripping strength, your upper body strength, whatever grappling sport we do, where we grab people, hook them, pull them, grip with them. You know, we do a lot of hand fighting. This, this implement really helps improve your skill in hand fighting. Okay, as I explained there in that video, um, I may not have, I can't remember, I'd have to go back and look at it again. I, I do use the power twister as a warm up. I, I like to use it as a warm up. You can always use it as a cool down or finish exercise. Uh, but it's it's a great implement for uh, for for working your your forearms. I still use it all the time, and I, I really enjoy using it. It's just a a fun thing to do, and it's it's portable. You can take it anywhere you want to go. Before you get on the mat, you can do some you know a couple sets of power twisters just to warm up your upper you know your arms. Great great tool. So anyway, the power twister I recommend it highly. Okay, let's look at the uh, the main subject of the show today is Udi Garami. Now, Ude Garami, Ude means arm, and Garami means to entangle, to lace around, to wrap around. <clears throat> and it, it certainly is a, a very descriptive name of the movement. And uh, for many years in judo, uh, it, you know, certainly in how I've trained, um, we've, to, we've looked at Ude Garami in two directions, in either upward Ude Garami in this direction or in a downward direction. Okay, so, so that's pretty accepted fact, and, and you see that most of the time, it really does work. But, you know, last several years, I've been really looking at Udigrami in a serious way, and I've come to the conclusion that, that there's actually a third direction that we can do Udigrami in, and, and a lot of people just take it for a separate arm lock entirely, but it's not. It is definitely uh, a, an arm entanglement, but we're doing it from the side, in a side direction. So not just upward, downward, but to the side. And what a lot of people call compression arm locks or a bicep slicer, um, that is really an udigarami because you're entangling his arm with your arm, or it could be your leg, but you're you know you're using your leg as well. But you're entangling his arm uh, just like you would in the other upward and downward direction. So I have three clips here on udigarami. Um, the first one, they're all very um, explanatory. They, they they cover the basics. Okay, there are who knows how many ways of doing udigarami, you know, hundreds, whatever, just your imagination is the limit, okay? But the first one, uh, udigarami uh, clip, is going to be on the upward direction, how I teach the upward direction of udigarami. Now, uh, you coaches out there, some of you may say, well, I teach it a little bit differently here or there, uh, but, you know, watch this. You may pick up some good pointers, at least how I coach. Uh, I'm not saying I have the only way of coaching, but these are very, very effective ways for me. Um, I know uh, back in my day, I used it Udigarami once in a while, and certainly my athletes over the years have used it with, with considerable success. The second clip will be on the downward direction, again, teaching the basics of it, okay? And then the third clip will be on the compression or sideway, uh, sideways direction of doing Udigarami. So let's, without further ado, let's take a look at the first clip. It's a little over four minutes, almost five minutes, on the upward direction of Udigarami, the very basics. Udigarami is a really efficient arm lock, and we're doing just the upper direction, okay? Again, there are a lot of ways to get him in here. We're just showing the basics. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to, I'm going to attack this arm on, on Eric here, okay? A good, good way to start is from a side position, side position. You can start from a, a top position like an Atate Shiho or a mount position, 
but I'm, I'm just going to start here from the side because I can get more crank here and it helps you learn the, the basics of it better. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to attack this arm. My elbow is really important. There are several key things that are going to be happening here. I'll, I'll point them out. The first one is the elbow in his neck. And this provides a, a, really a base, okay, an anchor to, to, to provide it in here, okay? If I just try to put my arm anywhere, I want to have this elbow in here tight, okay? Another really important thing is I want to control his wrist and control his elbow, and by doing so, I'll control the shoulder, okay? Because this is an elbow lock and very much a shoulder lock as well. Okay, so you're gonna be placing pressure on both the elbow and shoulder. Uh, technically, it's an elbow lock, but you, you'll feel it in your shoulder as well, guys. Okay, so we're putting this elbow here, and I'm grabbing his wrist, and the, the other key feature is when I grab his wrist, I like to get his wrist here, I like to hook it, okay? Because that way I've got a good control of it. Now, some guys will grab this way, that's fine, but if he's got a slick arm in a nogi situation, I might lose it too quick. So if I meat hook it like this, or actually hook it like this, with my thumb and fingers like that, I can catch it better. Okay, I'm just gonna grab it right there at that point. See that? Okay, if you had a gi on, I'd be grabbing that. Okay, there we've got that. Okay, here and here, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do with this hand, I'm gonna slide it under, and when I do, I slide under and I grab my own wrist. So you see kind of a figure four situation here? Does everybody see that? Okay, now this is the basic configuration. Now, you can either grab your wrist like this, or you can meat hook it like this. I didn't do this because I can lever up better, okay? That just works for me. You work what bet, what works best for you. Okay, so here, slide in here, catch it. Okay, now, you can keep, a lot of people teach it where they, they keep the, the wrist on the mat. I like to lift it up slightly. And see, it's always starting to hurt it by doing that, okay? So, you know, you can do that, it works, if you keep the wrist on the mat. But I like, to, I like to lift it up, and as I do, I like to pull it in. Here's another key feature, I like to pull it in on his wrist. Don't just leave it there. When I'm doing this, I like to crank it inward. See how I'm pulling in, and I'm driving my elbow into his head, into his neck, and I'm cranking up like this. So, we're applying pressure here at this joint, we're applying a lot of pressure here at this joint. Now, when I'm actually applying it, we're working here and we're fighting here, I, I want to trap this, but I, before I really try to really do a whole lot of stuff here, I want to try to slide this arm under if I can first. If I can slide this arm under, and when I'm actually applying it, we're working here, I'm working it, and I want to get it under here if I can first, and then I'll put it over. See how I'm doing this here? And I try this, and it does, he knows, he knows what's coming. He knows there's an arm lock coming. So if we're working here, and I kind of get my arm under it first here, and pry it over like that, see how? See how it lays it? Just right over it like it's a track, okay? And I put it there, elbow in the side, and I can crank it up like that, and there we have it. That's the basic configuration, okay? And I'm gonna show you, at this point, I'm gonna show you two other configurations you might like from that basic way, okay? Here's another configuration that when you're grabbing here, and you might get a little more torque, Instead of grabbing here, you might actually make a fist here. Like this. See how, like hammer down a fist and crank up. And it doesn't take much of a pull to do that. You just lift there. It's very, very mechanically very sound. So I do this here. Can you see that? Make a fist there. Now, this, I grab this and I've got a good handle here, and that's really a good one. But if that's not working, if you want to add a little more pressure, you can do this and crank it up even more. See how I'm doing that? It's really starting to hurt right away. Okay? Okay, another variation is if I grab both hands like this and I crank it out, I can crank it out like that. Not as efficient as this, not as efficient as this. But these are some ways to get into your udigurami, okay? Okay, I think that was pretty self-explanatory. That's how I approach udigurami, teaching it right out of the bat um, uh, to, to new people or anybody who wants to you know, know a little more about udigurami. That's it. That's my take on udigurami upward. The next clip, we're going to look at the downward direction of Udigarami. And I think it, it's almost like a separate arm lock in, in many ways. It, 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 is a, it is Udigarami. You are entangling the arm. There's no doubt about it. But um, there's so many different ways of doing Udigarami from that down direction that it almost has you know, life in itself in, in a way. But, uh, but you'll take a look here. Here's the basic application of how I teach anyway Udigarami. A good way to learn from the basics is from the side control position here, okay? 
All right. That being said, I'm here, make con good contact. Now, I don't want to put all my weight on Derek. I don't want to delay on him, because now I just don't have a lot of control over things. I want to have a good base, so like, no matter how I'm controlling him on the mat, I want to have a good solid base. So in this case, my knees are wide, my hips are quite low, and I've got a good solid base, all right? Now, to start the move, what I want to do, I want to grab this arm. Here's, here's the finished product, okay? Here's the finished product. Grab here, here like this, and then crank up. And it hurts. It hurts his elbow. It really hurts his shoulder, okay? So that's the finished product that we're going for. All right, but what we're going to do to start, everybody can start. So low here like this. All right, now, to, to get the start of the move, I'm going to grab the wrist first, and as I do that, I'm just going to kind of hook under. So I'm just kind of, kind of just hook up and just lift it a little bit. Now, when I grab his wrist, I hook like this. Get a good, strong hook like that. You can grab like that, you know, where you meat hook him, but if he's got no gi, his, his wrists are slick, he'll get away. If I get a good hook like this, this clamp hook like this, I can control him better, okay? All right, now here, I'm gonna to start to move under his arm. You'll see that come into play in a minute. But right now, this hand here, my elbow is gonna go right in his hip. Now, that's an important place to wedge my elbow in his hip. Now, I'm using this, my elbow in his hip, like we've worked Udi Garami from the top, where I'm gonna use my elbow in the side of his neck. It creates a base. So here's a strong base if I do it in the upper direction. Here's a strong base if I do it in the lower direction. Okay? So I gotta have that base to have there, okay? That, that gives me a good place. I can really manipulate his elbow then. All right, so I've got it here. Now with the other hand, I'm gonna scoop under. And as I do, I'm gonna grab my own wrist. And I don't, this one I'll go ahead and meet it because it gives me better leverage. So when I just up there like this, and now when I do this, you see how he's really compromised here? And you don't have to lift very much, okay? Now, some people say keep his hand on the mat. If that works for you, fine. I like to lift it up just slightly and grab because it cranks his shoulder more. It, it really hurts more, actually. And when I do this, when, when actually, I'm gonna lean backward into him and I'm gonna kind of lean back this way. See how I lean back a little bit? And I lift it up like this. So my hands will be like this and I'll lean back a little bit like that. So if you like that and crank it up, okay. and that hurts, okay? Now, to make it hurt even more, I'm gonna grab his arm and pull it in a little tight. That tightens this up here, it hurts the, it hurts the elbow more. See the angle is now kind of angling like this, and like this, and I'm cranking it, and it, gets, it hurts a lot quicker. Yeah. Okay, if I leave it here, where it's straight out and down like this, that'll hurt. But if you put, bend it in like this a little bit, it'll hurt him quicker. And the quicker I would give him to tap out, the better for me. So if you like this, slide under and then crank it in, and there we go. Okay? His escape to get out of this is for him to power out. So a good way to keep him from powering out, okay, is when I do this, pull this arm in as tight as you can. Okay? And that keeps him from powering out, because when he starts to power out, then I can crank him and it'll hurt him. Okay? I don't think I can add anything to that clip. Um... I tried to cover all the bases that I could, uh, and, and there are different ways of using your hands to manipulate and, and crank the arm more. Uh, so I think I showed that briefly in that, that video as well. Okay, so let's take a look now at the um, the third application, and you know you, whether you differ with me or not on it, you know that's totally up to you. But um, the sideways, sideways laterally, you know, uh, bending the arm this way, okay, um, and it's we're showing it here as a compression arm lock um, and Derek's doing a really good job teaching it here at one of our coaching sessions so uh, and he shows some different ways and some different ins and outs of doing it uh, so pay attention to this one this this clips a little more over a little over four minutes uh, but I think it gives a good idea of how the compression Udigarami, the bicep slicer whatever you want to call it from the side direction is a legitimate form of Udigarami in a legitimate third direction. So here we are, let's take a look at Udigarami from the side.
So what we're going to do is we're going to get in our, our same arm bar lever position, but sometimes you don't always get that hook. Sometimes they have a really deep grip like this and you have trouble getting your hands in. So what we're going to do instead is basically apply a, a bicep crush on it and make them let go or make them tap out from the crush. What's important to remember is I'm still putting my hand on the, the thigh over here, so I lock his elbow in. Or if you've got a key, you can also use it to keep that, that elbow locked in. I usually do the hip, okay? Now I might add, guys, remember the, the hand that Derek's doing it, in case this case is left, but it's the one that's the, the nearest to Mike's legs. Okay, so if you think of it in those terms, in this case, instead of left or right, the one closest to his legs, that's the one he's coming over, and his left hand is now anchoring on his thigh. So that's providing a good anchor and it kind of traps the guy's arm. Okay. Right. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to take my leg that's closest to his belt or his legs and I'm going to drape it across almost like I'm crossing, you know, my legs like this, but I'm going to put it down on his wrists. Okay. What this does is it starts compressing his elbow. Usually they'll let go at that point. And if he does, I just grab it and go for the, the arm lock. But if he's a tough guy, you'll keep that those hands together and you bring that through and just lean back a little bit and that's where the crush comes from okay now if he's especially tough we'll pop this through and get back okay occasionally he's super super tough you catch that you roll to the side bring this up and then kick back towards his head okay so first one, bring it down and just try and push down towards his chest and lean back, okay? It'll either pop back or it'll tap, okay? If you feel you need to, you can bring this up here and just do that. And I'm not triangling to hold it, I'm triangling to push my leg down towards the mat. So once it comes up, you can stomp your foot down and that gets the tap, okay? And then if you really, really want to be mean about it, as soon as you catch this, you roll, and then you bring this up and then kick back towards his head. Now, by the way, he's coaching, but with his right hand, he'd have it controlling. You know, you'd be using your right hand to kind of you oh, yeah. have in there. So kind of show a little realistic like you'd be doing okay, it. Okay, so I'm coming through here, catch this. We can pop that through there and sit back. Or I can catch through there and sit back. Okay. If it pops free, boom, you've got the arm lock. Okay. Likewise, if I'm here, coming through and it pops through. We're going through for arm locks here, okay? So you can also bring it up and pull through like this and then squeeze or bring that through, squeeze, okay? Just remember, this foot controls the head until this foot comes over. If I try and do it this way, he sits up and now I don't have anything, okay? So always keep control of his head with this one until you bring it over. Then it's okay to bring it back down and stomp that foot down because now I'm controlling his head as well as squeezing. Okay? And again, as I pointed out earlier, um, you know, a lot of people, me included for many years, said, well, that's a separate arm lock. But when you, really, when you look at it, when you analyze it, it's Udigarami because you're entangling his arm and you're controlling it. And, uh, you know, in this case, we were showing how to use the legs to add more pressure onto the arm. So, uh, and you don't always need the legs. You know, you can do, there are the variations of doing Udigrami from the side direction, the compression by bicep slicer without using the legs. But in this case, we did. So, uh, like I said, though, there are a lot of variations of Udigrami. These, to me, are the three basic applications. Okay, they're just like Jujigatami, just like any any submission technique or throw, whatever it may be, um, there are a lot of variations and applications. So if you have used these three as a basis for teaching, I think you're well ahead of the game and you can spread out from there. So that is Udi Garami and a bit of an examination on that and I hope you enjoyed it. Let's take a look at uh, a good question I got recently, uh, an email question. Um, what is the best body type to do judo? And this would also be for any grappling sport, whether it's um, sambo, uh, jujitsu, uh, whatever it may be, you know, submission grappling, wrestling, you know, any grappling sport. Uh, is there an ideal body type? Well, some people will say, yes, there is an ideal body type. I had a, a very well-meaning instructor many years ago when I was a teenager telling me, because I was a tall kid, um, 
He told me, he said, you know, you'll never be good at judo. You just have to accept that fact. And I said, well, why is that, sensei? He said, because you're too tall. He said, you're not built for judo. You're too tall. And he said, you'll, you'll never be able to master the, the skills of judo because of your height. And I said, wow. You know, and that set me back a little bit. And I looked and I thought, well, you know, gosh, I, I really like doing this. I, I hope I can do it better. Um, and I found out from other people that uh, they had different opinions on that. So uh, I've heard that myself, that I was too tall to do good judo or sambo or whatever it may be later on. But then years later, I ran into a fellow named Morris Allen. Uh, and uh, he was a world sambo champion, uh, Olympic uh, wrestling uh, competitor. Um, and uh, I think he was certainly a world-class judo player. He might've competed at the world championships in judo as well. And um, Morris coached me for a while in Sambo. He was, the, he was the guy that really got me, introduced me into Sambo, and I'm so grateful to him. But one thing he said to me at our very first workout in 1976, when I went down to train with him where he was living at the time, um, was he said, uh, make your judo work for you. Because I was talking about, well, am I too tall for this? And we were talking about that, that subject. And he said, well, make the technique work for you. Make the judo work for you. So and what he was saying was make it functional, adapt it to adapt that technique that, you know, it's not, not, it's not a cookie cutter. Okay. You can, you can make a uh, Harai Goshi, you can make Sui Naigi, you can make just about any technique fit your body. Now there are some, there are some techniques that work better for shorter, stockier bodies or taller, thinner bodies or whatever it may be. You know, that's a, uh, you know, Osotogari is certainly uh, used by uh, tall people oft, often. But then you look at uh, one of the greatest of all time, Yasuhiro Yamashita. Uh, I think he was about five feet 10 fighting as a heavyweight. So he was certainly not a tall heavyweight, but he used Osotogari with devastating effect. So I, I would consider him a short heavyweight, but, uh, but there you go. So he, he made the judo, he made the technique work for him. So I would say in answer to this question, um, is there a best body type for judo? There are some types that fit better to certain judo movement patterns, like Sewe Nagi. Uh, a lot of short, stocky people use Sewe Nagi and, and to great effect. But then taller people can also adapt that Sewe Nagi to make it use for them, to, to be useful for them. Uh, you can do knee drop Sewe Nagi, you can very low squat style Sewe Nagi. There are different ways of approaching that Sewe Nagi that if you're a tall person, you can make it work for you. So the answer to the question here, is there an ideal body type for judo? Just like any other activity, um, no, not really. <clears throat> you, you make it work for you. You know, you can be a, a tall golfer, a short golfer. You can be a, a tall football player, a short football player. Um, you know, you can, you can be really good at any sport. Uh, there are some sports like, you know, it, it's very difficult to find anybody in the NBA who is short. Okay, they're all big, tall guys. Okay, so I get that that does give you an advantage there. But there are some really good short basketball players who do really well and have great technique and, and, and play the game with, with excellence that just, you know, uh, they just, they're not NBA players because they're not tall enough maybe, but they're certainly good at basketball. So again, make the technique for you, work for you, make the judo work for you. Um, that's my best advice is for a, about being a body type in judo. Now, is there no specific body type? Um, you know, it's all up here. It's all up here and it's all in here. You know, how much you want to do it, how much thought you put into it. Um, that's the best body type right there. What comes out of your brain and your heart, how, how smart you train and how well you train. So that's what, it, you know, boils down to. So that's that. So anyway, hey, thanks a lot for uh, tuning in and I will see you next time.